Welcome back to AI Academy, in this lecture we will be covering the topic of text classification. The text classification is a method in natural language processing, NLP, where we categorize text into predefined classes or labels. Think of it like sorting mail into different boxes, each piece of mail gets put into the box it best fits into. This task is crucial because it helps computers understand, organize, and respond to human language in a structured way. Why is it important? Well, the sheer volume of text data generated daily, from emails, social media posts, customer reviews, and more, requires automated systems to process and make sense of it. Manually sorting through this data is impractical, if not impossible. That's where text classification comes in. By automating this process, we can quickly and accurately categorize large amounts of text, making it easier to manage and analyze. The text classification has a wide range of applications in NLP. Here are a few key examples. Spam detection. Suppose you're checking your email, and thankfully, most of the junk mail is filtered into the spam folder. And how it works, the text classification algorithms are trained to recognize patterns and keywords that are typical in spam emails versus legitimate ones. This helps keep your inbox clean and manageable. For sentiment analysis, suppose a company wants to know how customers feel about their latest product. And how it works, sentiment analysis classifies text into categories like positive, negative, or neutral. By analyzing customer reviews or social media posts, companies can gauge public opinion and make informed decisions. For example, if many reviews are negative, they might need to address specific issues. Next use case may be topic categorization, suppose a news website wants to organize articles into different sections like sports, politics, technology, etc. And how it works, the text classification can automatically sort articles into the correct categories based on their content, making it easier for readers to find what they're interested in. For language detection, suppose a social media platform needs to understand the languages in which users are posting to provide appropriate content or support. The text classification models can identify the language of a given text, allowing the platform to offer language-specific services. Document organization. Suppose a legal firm wants to organize thousands of legal documents by their type, such as, contracts, case studies, legal opinions. The text classification can sort these documents into predefined categories, making retrieval and management much more efficient. In the case of customer support, suppose a company wants to automate the sorting of customer service tickets to direct them to the appropriate department. The text classification can route tickets based on their content, billing issues to the finance team, technical problems to the IT support, and so on. These applications highlight how versatile and valuable text classification is in various industries. By automating the categorization of text, businesses and organizations can save time, reduce costs, and improve efficiency. Moreover, it enables them to extract meaningful insights from text data, helping to drive better decision-making and customer satisfaction. In essence, text classification is a foundational task in NLP that empowers computers to make sense of human language, turning unstructured text into structured, actionable data. Whether it's filtering out spam, understanding customer sentiment, or organizing documents, text classification plays a critical role in our interaction with technology and the vast amounts of text data we generate. To appreciate the significance of transformers in text classification, it's helpful to understand how NLP models have evolved over time. Let's take a brief journey through this evolution. In early days, NLP initially relied on rule-based systems, where experts manually created rules to process and understand text. These systems were rigid and couldn't handle the complexity and variability of human language very well. The rule-based systems struggled with ambiguity in context, making them impractical for many real-world applications. Next came the statistical models, with the advent of machine learning, Statistical models like naive Bayes and logistic regression became popular. 
These models use statistical methods to make predictions based on the probabilities of word occurrences. These models improved performance but still had limitations in understanding context and handling long-range dependencies in text. Then came the neural networks and word embeddings, the introduction of neural networks and word embeddings, like Word 2 VEC and GLOVE, marked a significant advancement. Word embeddings represented words as dense vectors in continuous space, capturing semantic relationships between words. Recurrent neural networks, RNNs, and long short-term memory networks, LSTMs, further improved NLP by introducing the ability to capture context and dependencies in sequences of text. However, RNNs and LSTMs had limitations in handling long sequences and parallelization. Next came the attention mechanisms. The introduction of attention mechanisms addressed some of the limitations of RNNs and LSTMs. Attention allowed models to focus on relevant parts of the input sequence, improving performance in tasks like machine translation. The attention mechanisms paved the way for the development of transformer models. And then came the transformers. In 2017, the transformer model, introduced by Vaswani et al. in the paper, Attention is All You Need, revolutionized NLP. Transformers rely entirely on attention mechanisms, dispensing with recurrence altogether. The transformer architecture allows for efficient parallelization, making it faster to train on large datasets. This was a significant advantage over RNNs and LSTMs. The transformers have brought about several benefits in text classification and NLP in general, like handling long-range dependencies, the transformers can capture long-range dependencies in text better than RNNs and LSTMs. This is crucial for understanding context and relationships between distant words in a sentence. For example, in a long sentence, the transformer can effectively understand the relationship between the subject at the beginning and the predict at the end, improving classification accuracy. Another benefit is the parallelization and speed, transformers allow for parallel processing of input sequences, making training faster and more efficient. This is a significant advantage when dealing with large datasets. And the ability to scale training to multiple GPUs or TPUs enables the handling of massive amounts of data, leading to better model performance. The pre-trained models, one of the most impactful benefits of transformers is the availability of pre-trained models like BERT, GPT, and Roberta. These models are trained on vast amounts of data and can be fine-tuned for specific tasks with relatively small labeled datasets. Pre-trained models make state-of-the-art NLP accessible to practitioners without requiring extensive computational resources or expertise in training large models from scratch. Flexibility and versatility, transformers are versatile and can be applied to a wide range of NLP tasks beyond text classification, including named entity recognition, question answering, text generation, and more. The same transformer model can be adapted for different tasks with minimal modifications, making it a flexible tool for various NLP applications. Improved performance, transformers have consistently outperformed previous models in benchmarks across various NLP tasks. Their ability to understand context, handle long sequences, and leverage large amounts of data contributes to superior performance. The improved accuracy and performance of transformers translate to better user experiences in applications like chatbots, search engines, and recommendation systems. In summary, transformers have revolutionized text classification in NLP by overcoming the limitations of previous models, enabling efficient parallelization, and leveraging the power of attention mechanisms. The availability of pre-trained models has democratized access to cutting-edge NLP, making it easier for practitioners to build and deploy high-performance language models. Whether it's understanding the sentiment of customer reviews, detecting spam emails, or organizing vast amounts of text data, transformers have become the go-to solution in the world of NLP. Let us now discuss the dataset used for text classification and how to load it using the Hugging Face Datasets library. For our text classification task, we will use the Emotion dataset, which is a collection of English Twitter messages labeled with six emotions, 
anger, disgust, fear, joy, sadness, and surprise. This dataset is particularly useful for training models to recognize and categorize emotions in text, which has applications in sentiment analysis, customer feedback analysis, and more. The dataset is organized into three splits, train, used for training the model. Validation used for tuning the model hyperparameters. Test used for evaluating the final performance of the model. Each example in the dataset consists of a tweet and its corresponding emotion label. The Hugging Face Datasets library provides an easy and efficient way to load and work with datasets. Here's how we can load the emotion dataset. Before we begin, make sure you have the Hugging Face Datasets library installed. You can install it using pip install datasets. Next, we can use the load dataset function from the datasets library to load the emotion dataset. Then, the load underscore dataset function is used to load the emotion dataset. And the trust underscore emote underscore code equals true argument is necessary because the dataset contains custom code that must be executed to properly load it. This is a security measure to ensure you trust the source of the code. The dataset is assigned to the variable emotions. The output is a dataset dict object that contains three splits, train, validation, and test. Train dataset, features, text, label, is the text of the tweet. Label is the emotion label associated with the tweet. And the number of rows, 16,000. Indicates there are 16,000 examples in the training set. The validation dataset, number of rows, 2,000, this indicates there are 2,000 examples in the validation set. The test dataset, number of rows, 2,000. Indicates there are 2,000 examples in the test set. This output provides a comprehensive overview of the dataset, showing its structure and the number of examples available for training, validation, and testing purposes. Let's now take a closer look at the dataset to understand its structure and contents. We will print the first few examples from the training set, with the command print, emotions, train, 5. In the output, each example consists of a text field containing the tweet and a label field containing the emotion index. The next step is to convert the dataset to Pandas data frame, to make it easier to work with, especially for exploratory data analysis. So, import pandas as pd, this line imports the pandas library, which is a powerful data manipulation and analysis tool in Python. It is widely used for handling tabular data. Next, emotions.set underscore format, type equals, pandas, this line sets the format of the emotions dataset to pandas data frame. By doing this, any subsequent operations on the dataset will return data in the form of a pandas data frame. DF equals emotions, train, this line extracts all rows from the to train, split of the emotions dataset and converts it into a pandas data frame, storing it in the variable DF. The output shows the first five examples from the training dataset, with each example consisting of a tweet and its corresponding emotion label. Converting the dataset to a pandas data frame makes it easier to perform data manipulation and analysis using the powerful tools provided by the pandas library. Now, the dataset is in a familiar tabular format, and we can perform various operations and visualizations using pandas. Next, we will be visualizing the dataset. To better understand the distribution of classes and the nature of the tweets, we can create visualizations. For example, we can visualize the distribution of the emotion labels. So, first we import the matplotlib library, specifically the pyplot module, which is used for creating static, interactive, and animated visualizations in Python. The syntax df label dot value underscore counts counts the occurrences of each unique label in the label column of the data frame df. And the plot kind equals the bar color equals sky blue method creates a bar plot of the label counts. The kind equals bar argument specifies that a bar plot is to be created, and color equals sky blue sets the color of the bars to sky blue. In the output the x-axis represents the different emotion labels. 
The labels are numerical codes corresponding to different emotions, which can be mapped to specific emotions if needed, such as, 0 for sadness, 1 for joy, etc. And the y-axis represents the frequency or count of each emotion label. It shows how many times each label appears in the dataset. The graph shows that the dataset is imbalanced, with some emotion labels appearing much more frequently than others. Label 1 and Label 0 are the most common, whereas Label 5 is the least common. This class imbalance is important to consider during model training and evaluation, as it can affect the model's performance. Techniques such as resampling, class weighting, or using specialized metrics can be employed to address this imbalance. By visualizing the data in this way, we gain a clearer understanding of the distribution of emotion labels, which helps inform the subsequent steps in data preprocessing, model training, and evaluation. Let us now move on to exploratory data analysis. In this section, we will perform exploratory data analysis, EDA, to better understand the emotion dataset. EDA helps us to inspect the dataset, visualize class distribution, and analyze tweet lengths. This preliminary analysis is crucial for identifying any patterns, trends, or anomalies in the data that can influence our model training. First, let's take a closer look at the dataset to understand its structure and content. We can inspect the first few examples from the training set. The print of df.head will output the first few rows of the dataset, showing the text of the tweets and their corresponding emotion labels. As you can see in the output below. Okay, let us now analyze the tweet lengths as the length of the tweets can also influence the model's performance. Tweets that are too short or too long might require different handling. We can analyze the distribution of tweet lengths using plot. So, in the code, df, length, creates a new column in the data frame df named length, and the df, text. Apply, len this applies the len function to each element in the text column, calculating the length of each tweet and storing the result in the length column. The plt.hist, df, length, bins equals 30, color equals red, edge color equals black, creates a histogram of the tweet lengths. The output histogram shows that the majority of tweets have lengths between 40 and 120 characters. There is a peak in the distribution around 50 to 70 characters, indicating that many tweets are of this length. The distribution has a long tail, with fewer tweets having lengths greater than 150 characters. Very few tweets have lengths close to the maximum of 280 characters, which is the character limit for tweets on Twitter. This visualization helps in understanding the typical lengths of tweets in the dataset, which is useful for making decisions about preprocessing steps such as padding and truncation during tokenization. Knowing the distribution of tweet lengths allows us to set appropriate maximum sequence lengths, ensuring that most tweets are fully included while minimizing the amount of unnecessary padding. By inspecting the dataset, visualizing class distribution, and analyzing tweet lengths, we gain valuable insights into the structure and characteristics of the emotion dataset. These insights guide us in preparing the data for model training and in making informed decisions about preprocessing steps such as tokenization, padding, and handling class imbalance. Now that we have a good understanding of the dataset, we can proceed to the next steps, data preprocessing and model training. This foundation ensures that our text classification model is built on a well-understood and properly prepared dataset. Let us now look into the text tokenization. So, tokenization is a fundamental step in natural language processing. It involves breaking down a text into smaller units called tokens. These tokens can be words, sub-words, or characters. Tokenization is crucial because it converts raw text into a format that models can process. Effective tokenization preserves the semantic meaning of the text while enabling efficient analysis and processing. There are different tokenization strategies each one has its own advantages and use cases. The main strategies are character tokenization, word tokenization, and the sub-word tokenization or word piece. Let's explore each of these strategies in detail. 
the character tokenization breaks down text into individual characters. For example, the sentence Hello World would be tokenized as H E L L O W O R L D exclamation point. The advantages of character tokenization is that it handles unknown words and typos gracefully since each character is treated separately. And also useful for languages with a large set of characters or having complex morphology, such as Chinese. The disadvantages of the character tokenization are that they result in a large number of tokens, which can lead to longer sequences and increased computational cost. And may lose the word-level semantic information. In the example the text variable holds the string hello world that we want to tokenize. List of text function converts the string text into a list of its individual characters. Each character in the string becomes an element in the list char underscore tokens. In the output the string hello world has been broken down into its individual characters, resulting in a list of characters. Each character from the original string, including the space, is represented as an element in the list. Let us now talk about the word tokenization. The word tokenization splits text into individual words based on spaces and punctuation. For example, the sentence hello world would be tokenized as hello world exclamation point. The advantages of word tokenization are that they preserves word level semantics. And also, simple and intuitive. Whereas the disadvantages are that the word tokenization struggles with out of vocabulary words and typos. And are inefficient for morphologically rich languages where words can have many forms. So, in the example we're importing the word underscore tokenize function from the NLTK.tokenize module. NLTK is a popular library for working with human language data. Next, we define text variable containing the text we want to tokenize. In this case, it's hello world. And next word underscore tokenize of text takes the input string and splits it into a list of words. The result is stored in the variable word underscore tokens. When we run the code, it splits the string hello world into separate tokens based on words. The result is a list of tokens, hello, world, exclamation point. In a nutshell, word tokenization helps break down the text into individual words and punctuation marks, making it easier to analyze and process each word separately in any NLP task. This is particularly useful for tasks like text classification, sentiment analysis, and more, where understanding each word individually is crucial. We will now discuss about the subword tokenization also known as word piece. The subword tokenization, such as the word piece algorithm, splits text into subword units. It balances between character and word tokenization by breaking words into smaller, meaningful chunks. For example, unhappiness might be tokenized as un hashtag hashtag happiness, where hashtag hashtag indicates a subword token. The advantages of the sub-word tokenization is that it handles OOV words by breaking them into known sub-words. It reduces the vocabulary size while maintaining meaningful units. And also effective for morphologically rich languages. Whereas it has some disadvantages, like it requires more complex pre-processing and training of tokenization models. And sometimes sub-word units might not always align with intuitive word boundaries. So, in the below example code, we first import the auto tokenizers class from the transformers library. Then the auto tokenizer dot from underscore pretrained, Bert base uncast, force underscore download equals true this line loads the pretrained Bert tokenizer with the specified model name Bert base uncast. Force underscore download equals true, this argument forces the tokenizer to be downloaded from the hugging face hub, even if it already exists in the cache. Next, the tokenizer.tokenize text function tokenizes the input text into subwords using the BERT tokenizer. And the subword underscore tokens is the resulting list of subword tokens. So, when you run the code to tokenize the text using the BERT tokenizer, the program first loads several files and configurations from your local cache, 
or downloads them if not available. This includes the model's configuration, vocabulary file, and various tokenizer settings. The detailed message log shows where each file is being loaded from and the specific configuration settings of the BERT model. After loading everything, the code tokenizes the sample text, unhappiness, into subword tokens. The tokenizer breaks down the text into smaller parts, making it easier for the model to handle and understand the text, especially when encountering new or rare words. The final list of subword tokens is then printed out, showing how the input text is segmented into these subwords. To summarize, tokenization is a critical step in NLP that prepares raw text for model training and inference. Different tokenization strategies offer various trade-offs between granularity, computational efficiency, and semantic preservation. Character tokenization is simple but can result in long sequences, word tokenization preserves word semantics but struggles with OOV words, and subword tokenization balances these aspects by breaking words into meaningful subunits. Choosing the right tokenization strategy depends on the specific requirements of your NLP task, the language you're working with, and the model architecture. Transformers, like BERT and GPT, typically use subword tokenization due to its balance of efficiency and effectiveness in handling diverse text inputs. As a next step we will be looking into the data preprocessing. The data preprocessing is a crucial step in preparing text data for model training. It involves converting text into a format that can be fed into machine learning models. In this section, we will cover three main preprocessing steps, converting text to tokens, padding and truncation, and tokenizing the entire dataset. To convert text into tokens, we use a tokenizer. The tokenizer is responsible for breaking down the text into smaller units that the model can understand. Here, we use a tokenizer from the Hugging Face Transformers library. Let us look with a practical example. First, we load a pre-trained tokenizer. For this example, we'll use the BERT tokenizer. Then we load the tokenizer and tokenize a sample sentence to see how it works. Next, we will convert tokens to input IDs. The tokenizer also converts tokens into input IDs, which are numerical representations of the tokens. In the example the command, input underscore IDs equals tokenizer dot convert underscore tokens underscore to underscore IDs of tokens, takes a list of tokens and converts each token into its corresponding integer ID using the tokenizer's vocabulary. The tokens are the list of tokens you previously tokenized from a piece of text. And the convert underscore tokens underscore to underscore IDs function maps each token to a unique integer ID based on the tokenizer's vocabulary. When you run this code, what it's doing is pretty cool. It's taking a list of tokens you got from some text, like words or subwords, and converting each of those tokens into a unique number. These numbers are the IDs that the model uses to understand the text. So for example, if your text was, hello, how are you doing today, and you had tokens like, hello, comma, how, are, you, doing, today, Question mark, this code turns those tokens into a list of numbers. Each number is like a special code that the model understands. When you see the output, 7592, 1010, 2129, 2024, 2017, 2725, 2651, 1029, these numbers are the IDs for each token in your list. The model doesn't work directly with words, it works with these IDs, which makes processing much faster and more efficient. This step is crucial for feeding the text into the model for further tasks like training or making predictions. Let us now look into the padding and truncation. When working with batches of text data, it's important to ensure that all sequences have the same length. This is achieved through padding, adding extra tokens to shorter sequences, and truncation, cutting off longer sequences. So, the padding involves adding special tokens, usually zeros, to the end of shorter sequences to make them the same length as the longest sequence in the batch. And the truncation involves cutting off the end of sequences that are longer than the specified maximum length. 
the tokenizer can handle padding and truncation for you. Let us look into an example. So, here first we define a list of sentences that we want to tokenize. Next the syntax, tokenizer of sentences, padding equals true, truncation equals true, return underscore tensors equals point, tokenizes the sentences with padding and truncation. The padding equals true, ensures that all sequences have the same length by adding padding tokens to the shorter ones. And the truncation equals true, ensures that sequences longer than the maximum length are truncated. And in the last return underscore tensors equals point, returns the results as PyTorch tensors. So, when you run this code, it takes a list of sentences and tokenizes them using the BERT tokenizer. It also makes sure all sentences are the same length by adding padding where necessary and cutting off any sentences that are too long. Input underscore IDs, these are the token IDs for the sentences. Each number represents a specific token. Padding tokens are represented by zero. Token underscore type underscore IDs, these are used to differentiate between sentences in tasks like question answering but are all zero here since we have single sentences. Attention underscore mask, tells the model which tokens are actual words, 1, and which are padding, 0. For example, the sentence, hello, how are you, is tokenized and padded to look like this, token IDs, 101, 7592, 1010, 2129, 2024, 2017, 1029, 102, 0 where 101 and 102 are special tokens added by BERT, and 0 is padding. Attention mask, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 0, showing that the last token is padding and should be ignored by the model. This process makes sure that all input sentences are the same length, which is important for feeding them into the model in a consistent way. Here, Input underscore IDs contains the token IDs with padding, zeros, added to shorter sequences, and attention underscore mask indicates which tokens are actual input tokens and which are padding tokens. Finally, we need to tokenize the entire dataset. This involves applying the tokenizer to every example in the dataset and ensuring that all sequences are padded and truncated appropriately. So, in this example first we define a list of sentences that we want to tokenize. Then the syntax, tokenizer of sentences, padding equals true, truncation equals true, return underscore tensors equals point, tokenizes the sentences with padding and truncation. The padding equals true, ensures that all sequences have the same length by adding padding tokens to the shorter ones. And the truncation equals true, ensures that sequences longer than the maximum length are truncated. Return underscore tensors equals PT returns the results as PyTorch tensors. When you run this code, it takes a list of sentences and tokenizes them using the BERT tokenizer. It also makes sure all sentences are the same length by adding padding where necessary and cutting off any sentences that are too long. The input underscore IDs are the token IDs for the sentences. Each number represents a specific token. Padding tokens are represented by zero. Token underscore type underscore IDs are used to differentiate between sentences in tasks like question answering but are all zero here since we have single sentence. Attention underscore mask, this tells the model which tokens are actual words and which are padding. For example, the sentence, hello, how are you, is tokenized and padded to look like this. Token IDs, 101, 7592, 1010, 2129, 2024, 2017, 1029, 102, 0, where 101 and 102 are special tokens added by BERT, and 0 is padding. Attention mask, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 0, showing that the last token is padding and should be ignored by the model. By converting text to tokens, applying padding and truncation, and tokenizing the entire dataset, we prepare our text data for model training. These preprocessing steps ensure that the data is in a consistent format and ready to be fed into our transformer model. With the dataset preprocessed, 
we can move on to training our text classification model. Okay, next we will be looking into the model training approaches, in this section, we will discuss two primary approaches for training transformer models for text classification, feature extraction and fine-tuning. We will explore the benefits and use cases of each approach and provide examples of how to implement them. So, first we will look into the feature extraction versus fine-tuning. In the feature extraction we use a pre-trained transformer model to extract fixed features from the text data. These features are then fed into a separate classifier, like logistic regression or SVM, to perform the classification task. The advantages of transformer-based feature engineering are such as faster training since only the classifier is trained, not the entire model, and also useful when computational resources are limited. Whereas the disadvantage is that it may not achieve as high accuracy as fine-tuning because the transformer weights are not optimized for the specific task. Next in the fine-tuning approach, we fine-tune the entire pre-trained transformer model on the specific classification task. This means updating the weights of the entire model, including the transformer layers. The advantages are that it typically achieves higher accuracy as the model is tailored to the specific task and takes full advantage of the pre-trained model's capabilities. The disadvantage is that it requires more computational resources and time for training. Let us now look into using transformers as feature extractors. So, in this approach, we use the pre-trained transformer model to extract features from the text, and then train a separate classifier on these features. First Torch and Transformers libraries are imported. Auto tokenizer and auto model from the transformers library are used to handle tokenization and loading of the pre trained BERT model. The BERT base Unkist model and tokenizer are loaded from the Hugging Face model hub. The function extract underscore features tokenizes the input text, passes it through the BERT model, and extracts the hidden state of the token as the feature representation. The function is called with the sample text, hello, how are you? and the shape of the resulting feature vector is printed. The output includes several stages of loading and configuration, followed by the feature vector's shape. The BERT model configuration, vocabulary, tokenizer, and model weights are loaded from the cache. Some weights related to specific tasks, like masked language modeling, are not used, which is expected because we're using the model for feature extraction. The shape, 1 and 768, indicates that the feature vector extracted from the text, hello, how are you, has 768 dimensions, which is the size of the hidden state of the token in BERT. So, in the below example, first, we are installing the necessary libraries, which are datasets and transformers. These libraries help us load the dataset and use a pre-trained BERT model for extracting features from text. Next, we load a dataset called emotion using the load underscore dataset function. This dataset contains text data labeled with different emotions. Since working with the entire dataset might be too memory intensive, we select a smaller subset of the dataset for training and validation. We take the first 512 samples for training and the first 100 samples for validation. Then we use the auto tokenizer and auto model classes from the transformers library to load a pre-trained BERT tokenizer and model. These tools will help us convert text into numerical representations that the model can understand. To manage memory usage better, especially in an environment like Google Collab, we move the model to the CPU. Next, we define a function called extract underscore features that takes in a batch of text, tokenizes it, passes it through the BERT model, and extracts the hidden state of the token. This hidden state is a numerical representation of the entire input text. We create a batch underscore generator function that processes the dataset in smaller batches, ensuring that the batch size does not exceed the dataset size. This function yields batches of features and labels incrementally. The collect underscore batches function collects all the batches of features and labels generated by the batch underscore generator into two arrays, one for features and one for labels. The next step is training and evaluating the classifier. We use a logistic regression classifier from Scikit-learn to train on the extracted features. 
This classifier is trained using the training data, X underscore train and Y underscore train. After training, we evaluate the classifier's performance on the validation set. We predict the labels for the validation set and calculate the accuracy. The output indicates that the validation accuracy of the logistic regression classifier on the validation set is 47%. This means that the classifier correctly predicted the emotion labels for 47% of the validation samples. In summary the steps includes to install datasets and transformers. Load the emotion dataset, select smaller subsets, and prepare them for processing. Load a pre-trained BERT tokenizer and model. Extract features from the text data using the BERT model. Process the dataset in smaller batches to manage memory. Train a logistic regression classifier on the extracted features. Evaluate the classifier's performance on the validation set. This approach helps manage memory usage effectively while training and evaluating a machine learning model on text data using BERT features. The validation accuracy of 47% suggests there is room for improvement, but it's a good starting point given the smaller subset of data used. Okay. Let us now look into to fine-tune a pre-trained BERT model for a classification task using the Hugging Face Transformers library. The code will load a pre-trained model with a classification head, prepare the dataset, define training arguments, and then train and evaluate the model using the Hugging Face Trainer API. First, we ensure that the necessary libraries, datasets, transformers, and accelerate are installed. This step is crucial because these libraries provide the tools we need to load the dataset, tokenize the text, and train the model. Then we load a pre-trained BERT model with a classification head. This model is designed to classify text into one of six emotion categories. Next, we load the emotion dataset, tokenize the text data, and prepare it for training. We select only the first 32 samples for training and 16 samples for validation to keep the initial testing quick and manageable. Then we set up the training configuration, specifying parameters like batch sizes, number of epochs, and logging settings. These arguments control how the training process will be executed. We use the Hugging Face Trainer class to manage the training and evaluation process. The training process is monitored and after completing the training, we evaluate the model and print the evaluation results. For the output interpretation the starting training indicates the start of the training process. The epoch 1-1 indicates that we trained the model for one epoch as specified in our training arguments. The training loss 1.07 and the validation loss 1.11 values represent the average error the model made during training and validation. Lower values indicate better performance. However, the loss values here suggest that the model might need more training or data. The evaluation results, eval underscore loss equals 1.11 This is the loss on the validation dataset after training. The eval underscore runtime equals 39.24 seconds indicates the total time taken for the evaluation process. The eval underscore samples underscore per underscore second equals 2.54 shows the number of samples processed per second during evaluation. The eval underscore steps underscore per underscore second equals 0.63 shows the number of evaluation steps processed per second. And the epoch equals 1.0, this confirms the number of epochs completed. So, in this process, we fine-tuned a pre-trained BERT model on a small subset of the Emotion dataset. The training and evaluation were set up with reduced dataset sizes and batch sizes to ensure quick testing and manage memory usage. The evaluation results provide insights into the model's performance, indicating areas where further training and data might improve accuracy. This setup ensures that the model can be trained and evaluated without running into memory issues or processing delays. Next, we are going to look evaluation and performance metrics. Evaluating the performance of a text classification model is crucial to understand how well the model is performing and to identify areas for improvement. In this section, we will cover evaluation techniques, 
methods to compare model performance, and strategies to address class imbalance. The evaluation techniques are accuracy which is the ratio of correctly predicted instances to the total instances. It is simple to calculate and interpret but may not be the best metric for imbalanced datasets. The explanation of the below code and output are that the syntax predictions equals trainer.predict, val underscore dataset, uses the trainer s predict method to run the model on the validation dataset, val underscore dataset. And the predict method returns a dictionary containing the raw predictions, logits, and the true labels, label underscore IDs. Next we extract the predicted labels, the predictions.predictions contains the raw logits, or the output values, from the model for each class. And the argmax, axis equals 1, finds the index of the maximum logit for each sample, which corresponds to the predicted class label. This step effectively converts the raw model outputs into class predictions. Then we extract the true labels, y underscore val equals predictions dot label underscore IDs, the predictions dot label underscore IDs contains the true labels for the validation dataset. Then we compute the accuracy, accuracy underscore score is a function from the sklearn.metrics module that calculates the accuracy of the model. It compares the true labels, y underscore val, with the predicted labels, y underscore pred, and computes the ratio of correctly predicted instances to the total instances. The output indicates that the model correctly predicted 62% of the instances in the validation dataset. Next, we will look into the precision, recall, and F1 score of the model, so the precision is the ratio of correctly predicted positive observations to the total predicted positives. The recall is the ratio of correctly predicted positive observations to all observations in the actual class. And the F1 score is the weighted average of precision and recall. So in the code below, from sklearn.metrics import precision underscore recall underscore f score underscore support, this line imports the precision underscore recall underscore f score underscore support function from the sklearn.metrics module. This function is used to compute precision, recall, and F1 score for a set of predictions. And to compute precision, recall, and F1 score, precision, recall, F1 underscore equals precision underscore recall underscore F score underscore support, Y underscore val, Y underscore pred, average equals weighted, the Y underscore val, is the true labels from the validation dataset. And the Y underscore pred, is the predicted labels from the model. The average equals weighted, this argument specifies that the metrics should be computed as a weighted average of the metrics for each class, where the weights are the number of true instances for each class. This helps to account for class imbalance. The function returns four values, precision, recall, F1, score, and support, the number of true instances for each label. We only need the first three, so we use underscore to ignore the fourth value. From the output we can see that the precision, 0.415 indicates that only about 41.5% of the positive predictions are actually correct. This suggests that the model is making quite a few false positive errors. The recall, 0.62 indicates that the model correctly identifies 62% of the actual positive cases. This indicates that the model is reasonably good at detecting positive cases but still misses some. And the F1 score, 0.497 indicates that the balance between precision and recall is about 49.7%. This metric shows that there is room for improvement in the model's overall performance, especially in achieving a better balance between precision and recall. These metrics are crucial for understanding not just whether the model is making correct predictions, but how it performs in terms of catching positive cases and avoiding false positives. They help us see where the model is strong and where it might need improvement. Next, we will be looking into the confusion matrix, it is a matrix that shows the number of correct and incorrect predictions made by the model compared to the actual classifications. So in the code below, the line, from sklearn.metrics import confusion underscore matrix this imports the confusion underscore matrix function from the sklearn.metrics module, which computes the confusion matrix. 
and the import Seaborn as SNS. This imports the Seaborn library, a data visualization library based on Matplotlib, which provides a high-level interface for drawing attractive and informative statistical graphics. And the import matplotlib.pyplot as PLT, this imports the matplotlib library, which is used for plotting graphs. Next we set up the plot, the syntax plt.figure, fig size sad face 8, for, sets up a figure with a specified size of 8 inches wide and 4 inches tall. cm equals confusion underscore matrix, y underscore val, y underscore pred, syntax computes the confusion matrix using the true labels, y underscore val, and the predicted labels, y underscore pred. The confusion matrix is a summary of prediction results on a classification problem. It shows the number of correct and incorrect predictions broken down by each class. SNS.heatmap, CM, not equals true, FMT equals D, CMAP equals a blues, creates a heat map using the confusion matrix, CM. Anot equals true means that the values in the confusion matrix will be annotated on the heat map. FMT equals D ensures that the annotations are displayed as integers. And the C map equals the blues sets the color map to a blue gradient. In the output, the confusion matrix provides a summary of prediction results on a classification problem. It shows the number of correct and incorrect predictions made by the model compared to the actual outcomes, targets. The diagonal elements are the number of correct predictions for each class. For example, the element at 0, 0 indicates that the model correctly predicted class 0 for 37 samples. The off diagonal elements are the number of incorrect predictions. For example, the element at 3, 0 indicates that the model predicted class 0 when the actual class was 3 for 15 samples. From the provided confusion matrix, 37 instances were correctly predicted as class 0. Two instances were incorrectly predicted as class 1. And the 25 instances were correctly predicted as class 1. And the three instances were incorrectly predicted as class 0. Next 11 instances were correctly predicted as class 2. And 2 instances were incorrectly predicted as class 0. And 1 instance was incorrectly predicted as class 1. For class 3, 1 instance was correctly predicted as class 3. And 15 instances were incorrectly predicted as class 0. And for the class 4, 2 instances were correctly predicted as class 4 and two instances were incorrectly predicted as class zero. The confusion matrix helps in understanding the performance of your classification model by providing insights into the types of errors it is making. From this matrix, you can see which classes are being confused with each other, which can be useful for debugging and improving your model. For example, the model has a tendency to misclassify class three as class zero frequently, which might indicate that these classes have overlapping features that the model is not distinguishing well. Benefits of using transformers for text classification are that the transformers have revolutionized NLP by providing several significant benefits for text classification. The transformers excel at capturing long-range dependencies in text, enabling them to understand context and relationships between distant words. This leads to more accurate predictions and better performance on complex tasks. The transformer architecture allows for efficient parallel processing, making training faster and more scalable. This is particularly advantageous when working with large datasets. The availability of pre-trained transformer models like BERT, GPT, and Roberta enables practitioners to leverage state-of-the-art models with minimal computational resources. Fine-tuning these models on specific tasks achieves high accuracy and performance. Transformers are versatile and can be applied to a wide range of NLP tasks, including text classification, named entity recognition, question answering, and text generation. This flexibility makes them a valuable tool for various applications. Transformers consistently outperform previous models across various NLP benchmarks. Their ability to handle diverse text inputs and capture nuanced semantic information leads to superior model performance. 
By using transformers for text classification, you can build robust, efficient, and accurate models that excel in handling complex language tasks. This makes transformers an essential component in modern NLP workflows. In this session, we covered the complete workflow of building a text classification model using transformers. Here are the key points we discussed. We started by loading and exploring the emotion dataset using the Hugging Face datasets library. This involved inspecting the dataset, visualizing the class distribution, and analyzing tweet lengths. We learned about the importance of tokenization in NLP and explored different tokenization strategies, including character, word, and subword tokenization, word piece. We then tokenized the dataset using the BERT tokenizer. We discussed the significance of padding and truncation to ensure that all sequences have the same length. We applied these pre-processing steps to the entire dataset. We explored two main approaches for training text classifiers with transformers, using a pre-trained transformer model to extract features and training a separate classifier, logistic regression, on these features. Fine-tuning the entire pre-trained transformer model on the specific classification task. We covered various evaluation techniques, including accuracy, precision, recall, F1, score, confusion matrix, and RCUC score. We also discussed the importance of addressing class imbalance and strategies to handle it, such as resampling, class weights, and synthetic data generation. We conducted a hands-on coding session where we loaded and explored the dataset, tokenized the text data, and trained and evaluated classifiers using both feature extraction and fine-tuning approaches. In next chapter we will delve deep into the inner workings of transformers, the revolutionary architecture that has transformed the field of NLP. Transformers are at the heart of modern NLP systems, powering everything from language translation and sentiment analysis to chatbots and search engines. Understanding the anatomy of transformers will provide you with the foundational knowledge needed to design, implement, and optimize these models for a variety of NLP tasks. Thank you for joining us for this lecture. We hope you found the content informative and helpful. If you have enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more educational videos.